right now let's look at question number 15 part b which is the framework question so this framework is given and what is given here a b b c c a c d d b are smoothly jointed light rods it is given that a b b c c a a b b c c a are all two way so this is two way this is two way so this is a what equilateral triangle so this is 60 this is 60 and this is 60 and what is given here what else is given uh, a load of w is suspended from w d and framework is smoothly hinged at a to a fixed point a and kept in equilibrium in vertical plane with a b horizontal a b is horizontal with the force p applied here vertically upwards to it at joint b right so a b is horizontal and c d is also going to be horizontal why right. extend this then this is 60 now so that means uh, c d and a b are parallel so that means c d is also horizontal right that should be clear right so now let's do the first part first part is find the value of p right so let's first draw this again and this one is connected here to this right so we have w force down here and p force here at b this is 90 degrees this is 60 so this is going to be 30 and all of these are 60 60 and a b c this is two way right two way so okay let's find p first we want to find p you know okay how do we find p right this is smoothly hinged at a you know so let's take moments about a so for the system take the moments about a for system the whole thing so then what do you have p times 2a anti-clockwise so that is positive p times 2a minus w times we have to find this length you have to figure out what this length is right so this is 2a then using the tan ratio we know what this has to be 2 root 3a no because tan 60 has to be root 3 so bd length is 2 root 3a 60 90 so this is 30 degrees so this is going to be what 2 root 3a cos 30 so 2 root 3a times root 3 over 2 so that is 3a right so this length is 3a so then what is the perpendicular distance from a to force w 3a plus 2a so 5a equal to 0 so then a a cancel 2p is equal to 5w or p is equal to 5w over 2 right so first part is done then the second part is what second part is draw a stress diagram using Bose notation for joints d c and b and find the tensions and thrusts okay so now we have to denote them so p we found 5w over 2 
so let's mark our regions to apply boss notation right so at a there's what some kind of reaction at uh, so that will mark as component wise y and it's like this then let's mark the regions so i'm going to pick this as a that is between y and uh, p value or phi w o t and this one as b then this whole thing as c this as d and this is e and this is f right everything is marked our regions are marked a p c e f right okay so now we'll start with what they suggested joint d so for joint d we'll start with what we know w is from where to where b to c so we are going from b to c b to c then c to f then back to b right b to c c to f then back to b right b to c is what b to c is w b to c is w length right b c we have marked b to c goes down w right then c to f is horizontal we don't know the size so let me just mark the horizontal line dotted horizontal line through c then f to b f to b is what it makes 30 degree angle with the horizontal f to b and it goes like in this direction so f to b can't mark it from here no it has to be from this side so f to b has to be like that so then c to f is like this right so then we'll erase this side right so now we know this is 30 degrees now f to b right so then we have this and now we'll find these values cf is what cf is going to be use the tan ratio right you can apply tan 30 is what tan 30 is w over cf so 1 over root 3 w over cf so cf is root 3 w right so cf is root 3 w so we found that then use pythagoras theorem to find bf so that is what 3w squared plus w squared so 4w squared so that is just 2w bf is just going to be 2w right so let's create our table in this we need four columns no? four columns rod size so the magnitude whether it's a tension or thrust right so here we have two rods now so we went from b to c then c d rod is from c to f c to f c d rod so c d rod is from c to f c to f is going away from the joint right c to f is in this direction so that is going away from this joint so this is going to be what tension this is tension 
and CD value is what? Root 3W. Right. Root 3W. Right. Then let's go back. We went from C to F, then F to B. F to B is given by B D rod. B D. B D rod. F to B. F to B is in this direction. F to B. That is going. F to B is going towards the joint. So that is going to be a thrust. That is thrust. So this is thrust. And that value is 2W. Right. So that is done. We finished with joint D. Then we have to go to joint C. So joint C will start with what we know F to C. Then we'll go to C to E. Then E to F. Right. So now we are looking at joint E. So joint E we go from F to C. First F to C, then C to E, then E to F. C to E, then E to F. Right. So let's see. F to C is already drawn. We go in that direction. Then C to E. C to E. C to E is. It makes a 60 degree angle with the horizontal. This one. Or 60 degrees from this side. C to. Right. So C to E. So has to make a 60 degree so could be in both directions then it has to be e to f that also makes what 60 degree angle right and it has this direction 60 degrees in that direction so the only possibility is this one E to F has to be, E has to be in this side, not that side. So, this one we can erase. And this is what, this is just a equilateral triangle. Because these angles are 60, this is going to be 60, this is going to be 60. So because we know CF is root 3 over W, all of these are all root 3 over W, right. So now let's figure out whether those are tensions or thrust. So first one is C to E that represents AC rod, C to E, AC rod. AC rod, we know the size root 3 over w root 3 w sorry and whether it's a tension or not tension or thrust so c to e what happens c to e is in this direction so that is moving away from the joint so that is going to be a tension so this is tension right then next one is what next one e to f e to f represents bc e to f represents bc bc also root 3 w e to f we want to go from e to f what happens e to f e to f is towards the joint right this direction e to f e to f is towards the so that is going to be a thrust so this is thrust right okay 
so we finished with d c and now only joint b is left so joint b we have three forces known only unknown forces this one right so two of them are already marked b f and f v b f and f v is marked right so let's do that one joint b joint b so joint b is what b f f v e a and okay we'll start with a b a b we can draw now. a b then b f then f v a b b f f v e a right so a b is phi w over 2 up right so we need to figure out where does a start so this is b phi w over 2 phi w over 2 minus w is 3 w over 2 so we have to go down 3 w over 2 so notice that root 3 w sin 60 is what that is 3 w over 2 so this length is 3 w over 2 so that means a is level with e point so mark it correctly so this is 3 w over 2 right this is 3 w over 2 so then the total would be 5 w over right so a b is marked so a b goes up to here then b f then f v e, then final one is e to a that is horizontal no? right we just need to complete the diagram e to a is just this length right so that is done right so e a value is what that is uh, how much this is root 3w no root 3w cos 60 so so that is root 3w over 2 right so this value is also found so now let's see what ea represents a b rod so a b rod a b rod size is root 3 w over 2 what is that e a is it going towards or away from the rod well, joint e a this direction e a goes this direction so towards the joint so thrust right so that completes the question we have found the all stressors size and we have mentioned whether they are tensions or thrust so that is question number 15 part b answer right